Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Coves aren't just for spindles. I watched an all-day demo last year by Benoit Averly, the noted French uh, woodturner, and he used uh, coves on a number of his, his work. Here's an example of this uh, uh, lovely box uh, that he did during the demo that has uh, coves. And he got me thinking about exploring using coves more for some of my side grain uh, projects. So today I want to show you what I do, how I do it, and the tools I use. And perhaps you'll find some, uh, some inspiration of how you can apply coves to some of your wood turning projects. Let's get started. These are the main tools I use for uh, doing cove work on uh, face grain work such as bowls and basically they're spindle gouges or what might be more preferably called a shallow fluted gouge because uh, it's the nature of their flute that uh, is a better indication of what they're suitable for. You can use bowl gouges on spindle work and you can use spindle gouges on bowl work depending on what it is you're doing. So here on the left this is a half inch uh, more typically uh, use is a 3 8 inch and then occasionally for small beads especially on on boxes I might use this quarter inch uh, detail gouge which uh, has an even shallower uh, flute. Here's some additional uh, tools that I I use for uh, cove work. Occasionally that I use this small uh, round round nose scraper. I think you can see the, the, the bevel here. I also use this, this round nosed uh, uh, scraper. It's a 3 8 inch, uh, made from a 3 8 inch by 8 inch uh, uh, high speed steel blank. It's just basically flat on the top and then uh, rounded. Uh, use that occasionally. For smaller things, especially for uh, boxes and for doing, uh, making a cove to, to uh, texture in, I use this small quarter inch. I did videos uh, on these small tools. Uh, there'll be a link to those at the end of this this video. But this cold tool, basically, it's about a 45 deg uh, degree angle. Um, one viewer, Jim Rob from Scotland, uh, pointed out that if you that if you'll take it and put a slight one and a half millimeter secondary bevel. Uh, right here, it cuts even better. Um, other tool I use, uh, I showed earlier uh, the spear point scraper I I, uh, I use on, uh, or I'll show you a spear point scraper I I use when I use uh, demonstrate the technique. But I use this pyramid tool for doing small uh, V grooves to highlight coves on smaller items. Okay, let me show you how we're going to apply this technique. I've got this uh, this bowl with fairly straight sides with a slight slope, and I'm going to make a series of coves similar to this. It's about two and a half inches, so uh, we're looking at about a half an inch per cove. And then I'm going to decorate it with V grooves first before we do the coves. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to use a pencil and just roughly. You know, we're not going to get crazy. I'm just going to lay out some lines here at about a half inch apart. I'm going to put one bead here to start it. So we're going to have one, one here, one here, one here, one, two, three, four, and, and then we'll end it there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those prominently. They don't have to be perfectly uh, exactly the same distance. A certain bit of variation just as a it's just one of the design features. Now this is a rough turn bowl. I'm turning it twice. I turned it some time back. You could turn it green and let it uh, go oval uh, after you've de done the decoration. That's a possibility too. I've already taken down the rim just a little bit so I knew exactly how wide that rim was going to be at the top. Um, since it was somewhat of an oval shape. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some small uh, V grooves there and we're going to do that using that spear point tool I showed you earlier. Alright, so laying the tool flat on the rest down center.
Let's speed up a little bit. About 1200. Going to go straight in perpendicular to the wood. Not too deep. Oh, maybe eighth of an inch. And there we go. Going to reorient the, the tool rest. Get parallel to, to the wood as much as possible with a little less than a quarter of an inch gap there. And keep in mind our grain orientation on a bowl, we want to go from the bottom to the top. That's our best cut, and that's the way we're going to make our coves. So similar to the way we do coves on a spindle, we're going to come in here. I'm going to anchor my fingers here. I'm going to slice into it, push up to the bottom. But in this case, I can keep on riding the thing all the way out, uh, unlike on a spindle. Rotating it as I'm coming out. And just give it a nice scallop. Go on to the next one. Just to the edge of that V groove, I'm slicing in, not on the tip, but just in front of the tip. And then I'm kind of pushing and rotating the handle so I'll keep that, uh, that cutting edge move, moving in through the wood. touch that up with a little bit of uh, sandpaper and I think I've got it. This may be obvious but I thought I'd better say it just in case. You can't turn a smaller cove than the diameter of your tool. So for example if you're using a half inch spindle gouge you've got to make those coves at least a half, a, half an inch to be able to accommodate it. If you're smaller ones you may need to step down to three eighths. Even smaller ones you may step down to uh, a quarter of an inch. Uh, one other thing I want to show you is when it comes to like sanding inside these, an easy way, find you a dowel that f roughly fits in with those, those coves, wrap your sandpaper around it and use that to, to sand. And be, be careful, and I'm doing that because I don't want to lose this crisp detail in here where I've got those V-cuts from that scraper. You can do this by hand or you can do this with a, with a lathe running. to do it of course is uh, is just roll your sandpaper maybe even back it with a little uh, cardboard that's been uh, with some spray adhesive and and then and roll roll it in like this again being careful not to roll over the edge into that damaging that crisp detail and we can extend that same feature around to the uh, top rim of a bowl. And then I'm going to use a half inch spindle gouge, bracing it a little bit, slicing in with that edge and just kind of coving in. Bring it around like I'm scooping ice cream. And come on back out. Okay, got a little bit of a 
just a touch of an edge. Uh, that'll probably sand out, but so I'm going to try out these three these three tools, uh, doing some coves on the side of the bowl. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make some V grooves and get that speed up just a little bit. Do that first one. I want to mark where the others are going to be because I want them somewhat somewhat similar. I'm just going to mark these rings. So now I've got these different uh, rings. Now we're going to put a cove in, in them with, uh, with each of these tools. First I'm going to use the cove tool. Uh, we're going to uh, keep this thing uh, almost flat and we're just going to use it similar. Uh, it, it, we're going to use it as a scraper, um, a negative rake scraper. and We're just going to start here and come across. The next one we're going to use the Scucci gouge, which has that uh, bottom profile similar to a spindle gouge, but then the top is flat, very similar to the Cove tool, but it actually has a bevel, and we're going to use it uh, as a uh, spindle gouge with no flute. So we're going to come in here on the bevel. We could use it as a scraper similar to the other, but it, I don't think it's going to work quite as well. But it'll work similar to a spindle gouge by riding the bevel, and again, if we don't get that bevel, ride that bevel, we're going to have a problem. Then when we get to the bottom, we're going to change directions. So there's three different tools that'll do very three very similar tasks. Uh, some of them do some tasks better than the others. Um, so that's that's what they're used for. Just because you know how and have the tools to add embellishment, uh, some woods uh, don't require it. Here's an example of this uh, red flame box elder. It's not something I would put any uh, decoration on on at all. So it I find it works. Uh, beads and coves tends to work better on on a more plain plain wood but if it's if it's highly figured got a lot of color uh, probably you don't want to to add extra embellishment the world renowned wood turner Richard Raffin says your art is your personal sense of arrangement of mass and space I like that let's look at some examples of my use of coves and my personal sense of the arrangement of mass and space uh, first Starting off with this, this large sourwood uh, bowl, uh, it has a single cove around the top, and it was turned green and uh, and just allowed to warp. Uh, so there's an example. But it also it's not only is it aesthetic, but it it's uh, also makes it a little bit easier to grasp by giving you a place to to put your fingers. Here's a couple of smaller examples where I've got a smaller descending in size uh, series of, of coves, again with that V groove highlighting each one. One similar here uh, to the one I turned earlier uh, with uh, slightly different sizes. Uh, and in one case I've got, actually got a bead underneath the, the cove. I've also got a slight uh, cove around the rim in which I, I added texturing. Uh, here's a use of a cove in a 
ring ring holder, which I did a video of, of recently, and that's basically a, a, a cove because of the uh, ring holder in the middle. Let's look at some other type of turning projects. Now, technically these are spindle projects, but it's, it, I just want to show you some examples of the use of coves on boxes here and here. And the use of a cove on this pop top box to add a little element of design of that, that curve. Uh, and this is similar to that, that other one with that, that cove in it. These little pill boxes all have, have coves. And that's an example. Of course, these are spindle examples. Now, on platters, uh, these two platters show a nice uh, cove around the rim. And not only is it aesthetic, but it's also functional in that, again, it provides a place for you to put your thumb to help balance it and, and make it easier to carry. Uh, you'll notice uh, collection plates in your church always tend to have that cove around the top uh, rim to make it a little easier to grasp. Well, I hope this video has inspired you to uh, consider adding some coves to some of your work to see what it can do to improve it. I did a somewhat related video on beads a while back, and you, uh, you'll find a link here if you're interested in watching uh, that video. If you like this video, consider subscribing, click on the like button. Uh, I enjoy all your, your comments and posts. Uh, if you have any questions, any kind of feedback, feel free to, to uh, post them uh, on, on the video. Stay safe turning, my friends.